All right, good evening, guys. Kind of Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for Friday, 6th of October, 2023. So there's something I want you to notice on the time frame that I'm using on the 30-minute hybrid workshop, or a 30-minute hybrid swing. There's about uh, uh, there's about fifty bars on that because I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm showing about eight days, and there's uh, let's see, one, two, three, thirteen. 13 bars a day. So maybe there's 100 bars. I guess that's better. 100 bars for context. And what I, what I am looking for are these turning points defined by the turning points of the dragon on, on symbols that have large directional moves. Right? The dragon turns here at the 10-day low and the 30-day low, and I know that because it's the blue box. <clears throat> Makes a big turning point here. It's making a turning point here. That's, that's important. I mean, there's lots of moves that are happening inside here, but those big turning points are crucial. And so you have to have a multi, multi-time a multi-day time frame uh, look at this so here's today's action this yellow box here's the five-day action this is about eight days and that gives you a sense of the oscillation of this thing and I'm trying to hit these moves in the middle trying to get as much of this meat on the bone as I can if those are like the sharp elbows I'm trying to get that soft meat in the middle and being a being sensitive to that like this collection of RL10 turning points yeah, there wasn't much follow through in those in those two or even in this one or in this one You know, and it rolled over again. So that's sort of telling you it's the downward trend. And then you get a triple bottom. And then here's one where it hesitates and it doesn't roll over. It just keeps going. So what I want you to notice is I'm making decisions at those points to try to do things. Like this one, it started to stall, so I cashed it. It didn't go up. It continued to fail. That was an easy reentry. This is when I tried to go up. It didn't. So that's a quick exit, and that's an easy entry. Ah, this one didn't fail. So now I have a failure to follow through to the upside and now a failure to fail. That feels like a sideways channel developing because of those two failures. And now it may be that this long run down is done. And so from this movement, I'm ready for a break in either direction. Like if this fails out of the box, I'm short. Otherwise, I'm long. And notice where I'm entering. At the PSAR flip on the 30, and my stop is at the bottom of the PSAR flip. It is just that simple in my little simple mind. Now, sometimes the entry is a little bit late, like on this one. But the risk box is the same because that's what the size of the PSR flip is. And that's like the, you know, a couple R10s or maybe a frog box, whatever the approach. But I start with what the size of the standard PSR flip box is. And then when it fails to fail, second position. So PSR flips, and you, you've got to be sensitive to the turning points 
in the time frame that you're looking for. And I think you need about 100 bars of context. Remember, the last 30 bars are what's being used for the RL30. And the last 10 bars for the Dragon and the RL10. And then the RL10 is what's driving the PSAR. So if you're using 100 bars for context and 10 bars for your actionable signals, the 100 bars give you the ability to interpret, inter, interpret, and then the 10 bars is the actionable signals. It's like the live end of the wire. It's this live end of the head of the snake that's looking to go left or right. And the rest of the body, those 90 bars behind are showing you like the strength of the, of the moves for the size of moves. So don't get fixated. Don't get your blinders on. Just like you got to look at the whole length of the snake or the dragon, if you will. There's a lot of energy in Alcoa. It went from twenty-five fifty to thirty. That's five dollars on a twenty-five dollar stock. That's a twenty percent move in one, two, three days. That's a lot of energy. Hey, there's another twenty percent move. That's a lot of energy baked into this cake. This thing is in play. So now when I'm taking my shots at a here, here's how I looked at this yesterday. It's got a big move up, a big move down, and then because of those two failures and supported by those RL10 turning points and the 10 period low, that feels like a sideways zone right in here. And now the head of the snake is ready. It's rested. It was resting. Now, who's going to be the next guy to move this thing? Is it the, the winners who are going to use all this energy and believe that it can get up to here? Or is it going to be all these guys that have that negative energy that think it's going to collapse? Well, it didn't collapse here, and it had three days to collapse there, and it didn't. So I'm not surprised by an upward move here. That's just normal snake behavior or dragon behavior. And remember that that head of the snake has got his little tongue out and it's fluttering back and forth, just investigating. That's how he's gathering his information. And that thing is vibrating to detect which way he wants to go. So there's information in all of these trades. And then by, by trading fewer symbols, but symbols that are behaving in this manner with lots of energy and clear turning points, you can start picking up the rhythm of that population that's trading them and develop some expertise. That's the idea behind the Kata 2 challenge, which asks you to focus on just a few symbols and internalize the DNA and develop proficiency and touch with your favorite horse to ride or your snake to study. And then I trade these snakes like a mongoose dancing around it, never getting decisively engaged until I've seen what it can do and I've built up some markets money. Alcoa, 30 minute. I treat that as a harsh winter. It could be, it's not a Kata 2 because it's got lower lows. So that's an SSC. PSR flip, two hours into the day. Standard risk. The thing moves out sharply. Now, I wouldn't be offended if you took that as an exit in the last hour of the day so that you were flat overnight, 
with 1.5R. But because almost everything in the market looked like this and has taken off, including the S&P, I feel like there's a lot more energy in the S&P. So you, you got to remember on these large caps that we're trading that the market is worth about 50% of its return. And its sector is worth about 25% of its return. And the company, if you're trading a company, only about 25%. Well, here's the energy that's coming from the S&P. Look at these big turning points. Look at the, there's a kata too. This thing gapped down and ate all of the stops. And then it did nothing but this all day. That's a huge turnaround in the S&P. That's a lot of energy feeding forward into next week. So I'm not offended with holding this position here because I can feel all of that SPY energy making that turn and getting ready to run. And there could be a nice gap on that next week as people study these charts and say, oh, we averted disaster over these last three days. World's not going to end. Maybe it's time to buy on a dip. And then you'll see a lot of orders coming in on Monday. And if that's true, you'll see a large gap up. And I'm willing to use this little cushion in order to have the position that benefits from the gap. Now, you've seen earlier this week where that cost me some money, but you've also seen this week where that made me some money, and I'm willing to take that risk because I have some markets money in Alcoa. So that's Alcoa. AI, it made its turning point a little earlier, and it's had higher lows. So that's an automatic kata two. This is why I don't hold it overnight, because I wanted to make bank. Otherwise, I'd have been looking at that much of a loss. So I just make bank. I notice the gap down. I get a one, two, three. It clears the dragon. I buy it. The rest of the market is up. This thing is run. It wasn't clean. I took a dragon exit for plus one. So I'm collecting, hey, it didn't lose, plus one plus one, I'm just making a chip stack of markets money that I can use in future bets on AI. And I like AI because look at the magnitude of those moves. This thing is a slow grind up and when it fails, it fails big. So I don't stick around. I don't stick around, get paid. Amazon. Nice cycling snake. I tried the long, nothing. Tried the long, it closed here. I was holding plus one. I like that as an opportunity. It bit me for minus one. Okay, you got me. And then it gave me a one, two, three entry. I'm back in the zero state. I just re enter that position. Only now this thing goes up like a scalded ape it clears the rl10 so i add a second position and it closes very well plus i'm feeling all of that spy support and tech support was large today so amazon is an easy one to hold and i've got every large cap fund manager in the world has to own this thing and they'll look at this as a series of kata twos and buy on dips. And getting back to here should be a no-brainer next week. So I don't mind holding two R or two positions overnight. And it's holding four R and two R. It's holding six R, which pays for the one R risk that I took. So I got net five R on two positions and looking good for the weekend. Not afraid to own Amazon. Notice the PSAR flip. 
which side I'm buying it on. Caterpillar. Oh, if there was ever an orderly move, big peak. When this peak collapsed, you got a collapsing dragon. Second leg held support, held support. Big gap down to gather up all the all the stops. PSR flip breaks above the peak of the RL10. That's a no-brainer. Standard risk. It's the same risk every time. Comes back comes through the edge of the dragon. I just said, is that a risk I want to hold over the weekend? No. One, two, three R. Make bank. Build the chip stack. Lather, rinse, and repeat. That's just leg one. If this works and the market is good next week, it's going to get all the way back up to 278. Cliff caught a two standard re-entry intraday. It had an asymptotic rise. Dragon horn started failing, came all the way back to the edge of the dragon. I'll collect 2R and have no risk overnight. Chevron, yesterday's risk carried overnight. It worked. Dragon horns started dragon exit, 2R. No risk. Dish, uh, yesterday's SSC, it worked. Today gapped all the way down to here. I exited for 1R, gave back 3R on the overnight gap. So, so what? And then no significant moves. I'll just wait for next week. But that thing is in play. When you see moves of that magnitude, this thing is in play. Here was an effort. That was the first recovery effort. They got their monies out. It did not fail, so now this is a perfect zero state. If you are a believer in the long side, you could look at evidence here that says that's an overreaction and the buyer started to show up and they were conservative, so there's a good chance for more gains next week. That's if you're on the long side, you can find evidence to support that. If you're on the short side, you say, that's easy, this thing is a dog. And there's only tactical traders here, and they, they ran at the first sign of pressure. As soon as this breaks below today's low, that thing is collapsing, and it's going to be another one of these. And they got a horrible business model. So my point is, if you have a directional bias, you can find a reason to fall in love with a directional trade. I don't have a directional bias. But I can recognize a compound critical state when I see one, which is a larger than normal move in either direction in a shorter than normal period of time with tight range compression that gives me a low risk to a large reward. That's what I'm looking for. Don't lose sight of that. Devon Energy, look at that. I mean, holy mackerel. Talk about being in play and a large move, this failure to fail further is information. Look, it failed large here. Continuation did not fail. Today, PSAR flip, I'm an hour into the day. Tight risk at the PSAR bottom. Because if this fails, I'm going to be short, but it doesn't. It runs to here, and then there's an orderly exit for 1R maybe a little more. I love that. I'll take that trade every day and sleep with no overnight risk like a baby. Electronic Arts. Are you kidding me? Cata 2's galore and not taking the overnight risk. Not I took the overnight risk here and got burned. Didn't take the overnight risk. It opened in an orderly fashion above the RL10. So I just buy it back with a standard risk, and it rewards with a 3R gain. And this thing is free and clear. Free and clear. No resistance. So I don't mind holding that next into next week with that energy from the SPY. 
coming in, that thing could really be a, a candidate for a large move. Emerging markets, same thing. Two positions, 8R, Ethereum, same thing, 3R, holding it over to weekend. Mexico, SSC, 3R, Brazil, same thing. The, the fact that I got no overnight risk means I don't suffer that. And now I can see the 1, 2, 3 easily. I see it get through the dragon. The dragon turns. Standard risk closes well. I love that energy. Today should have been a massive win for you if you're trading my style. Intel, this thing has failed to fail. It has failed to follow through, but I just keep shooting after the gap down, which clears the deck. Emerging Dragon, PSR Flip, and it closes well. I feel tech support. I feel the potential. That's one I'm willing to hold over the weekend. If you didn't, I don't mind. IP, I completely missed the short side. I was so busy chasing things that were working that I didn't even see that one, didn't even hit my radar. Can't catch them all. Uh, IYR, this is the recovery in the home build, uh, U.S. real estate, after that massive sell-off. Here's your SSC at the piece surface. You should be noticing where I am making my buys. Little cotta twos after turning points, PSR flips, tight risk, increment up. I got burned on the gap and then saw a one, two, three entry. So I just get in the zero state, hold my nose, buy it. That's the revenge trade. It gets plus one back. Regional banks. Uh, I got burned on that one, holding it overnight. Here was the overnight hold on two positions. It burned me here, so it turned the second position into a negative. The first one paid for it. Saw the sell-off, one, two, three. Cleared the dragon, buy it. Probably could have exited here. But I felt that energy, decided to hold it. It's holding right here. I got plus one on one position. I'm willing to treat that as a turnaround and ready to see it come up and test. Mattel, uh, this was the story of the day. Big sell-off, rapid, huge buying in the S&P, which lifted the entire market. Routine one. McDonald's, uh, the short. It gapped down to here, so I'm going to stay short. This is the case where the gap helped me. It sold off all the way to here and then came back up in that same bar. Exit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Miss this, but it didn't really follow through much. I think people are still mentally bruised from this. But I gar I'm not going to guarantee anything, but I would not be surprised to see Microsoft really benefit from the fact that it is so oversold it's already turned the corner and the s p has a ton of energy and it didn't catch up to Mc this is mcdonald's lagging you better get on this one on be ready on monday that's all i can say don't let me tell you i told you so merc yesterday's entry this is just grinding north i'm gonna let one position just ride Microsoft, oh, I've been telling you tech this week. Here's your Cotta 2s. Here was yesterday's Cotta 2 entry and the close. I held it. This hardly even budged. At this point, this was the, all that energy from this morning on the turnaround. It cleared all of the resistance. This is free and clear. So I put the second position on. I saw the entire market on fire with tech in the lead, and this is Microsoft on sale. Third position, fourth position. I'm 
that's as much as I can bet the farm on. I'm betting a, an entire pasture on McDonald's, and it closed very well. That's what a measured risk looks like with markets money. Marijuana took the SSC uh, exit. This was short. This one did not follow through, so we exited and stopped and reversed. Covered it today. Missed this move, but I like this as being a zero state, ready to go in either direction. NVIDIA. Uh, the tech recovery, part of the COTA 2, continuing to go. I held it. It gapped down against me. I preserved a half an R. And then the one, two, three, it resumed. It took out the emerging dragon, re-entered, and I'm holding that one with one position over the weekend as part of the tech surge and part of the SPY surge. And the this is NVIDIA. This is the AI champ. Getting a chance to buy it on sale. Where is NVIDIA in its life cycle? I'm going to go out and look at the three-day. There's still plenty of room for this to get to 500. That's a 10% move from here to the top of the stack. And if it gets above 500, look out above. This thing was on sale for 20% off. Got it here today at 10% off. There's no way I fear for that position, except, you know, in case the world ends. PBW, clean energy, in play, leg one, second leg, and then it failed to fail. It did not fail further this morning. One, two, three, PSAR flip, buy it with standard risk. It's holding here. It cleared the previous resistance. I've got two R in hand. Let's go. Rivian. Harsh pain and suffering. Failed to fail further. PSAR flip. Let's go. One R in hand. Boring. Look at that move in the S&P today. Here was the five-day high. Took four days to sell off, monkeyed around, gapped down to catch all of the sleepers, and then did nothing but that all day. You have got to be able to detect this in SPY, for crying out loud. You've got to be able to see that as a large directional day. And that pulled everything north with it. This was guys buying the index and options and futures with leverage, buying it on sale, at 420 that held and that was the message going into the weekend and then they didn't even get out of the positions because look it only gave back that much that is a huge directional day treasuries tesla entered just because it's tesla one r in hand u.s steel uh, missed it so that's what we got to be able to do guys you got to look at the 100 bar context. Remember that the front 10 pieces of that is the head of the snake. That's the body of the snake that tells you about the energy. It's the distance it travels and then the amount of volatility in its little wiggles. How fast is it wiggling? How far is each little wiggle? Snake volatility technique. And then pick your shots like a safe sniper from your hidey hole where you have security and you take your shot and you get what you're w willing to take and you trust the edge of the cliff if this fails that way you're short if it doesn't fail it's going up watch your overnight risk that's all
this one perfectly captured the sniper trade of the day. Um, the essence of it. Scratching a long trade, seeing the big gap up and then the failure and the turning point, the short, the second position on a collapsing dragon, the big sell-off and then the recovery, the dragon exit, sideways chop, caught a two, and this was today in, in Ethereum. This was today's move. This was yesterday's speculative caught a two entry. This is the second day of a successful swing trade off a Kata 2 exit. And where is it? It's getting ready to test critical resistance based on the 100 bar look back. And this is fractal, so the 100 bars gives you all the context that you need for your decisions up here at the head of the snake. Uh, George, what I'm going to tell you is this is too many symbols to model. I might take five of those so you can see a pair. I might take Alcoa. I, I would take Microsoft for crying out loud and real estate. That's enough. Too many. That's an advanced technique. You haven't taken the course. I would do the supported spring crossing. I would do the Kata 2 and the collapsing dragon. That's enough. I wouldn't be buying on open anything. I wouldn't be trading the one minute chart. I'd be focusing on the 30s and occasionally on the three minute just for practice. The dragon exit you've seen me demonstrate. I'd trail with whatever your risk is, one hour trail, and then invoke a sniper based on how you feel so you can start seeing what your sniper sees and feels. Look at 100 bars. Use 30 minutes as your primary. Get rid of the one minute. Take the course. And I say that, and what's missing in here is on your patterns, re-entry. And staying with it during the day. Okay, here's Brian. PSAR flip, buys at standard risk, dragon exit perfect, tries it, it doesn't work, cuts it immediately. 0.37 expectancy. If you stayed with, you could even add Devon as one of the things you stayed with. If you stayed with it, you would be, you would have been ready for this breakdown as a continuation of the downward pressure. That would have been a no-brainer two days ago. This was a good effort and then covered it and I'm wondering on the piece where is my entry? If Devon Energy was one of your five primaries and you saw that tight PSAR flip after a move like that you'd be all over this and you'd trade this and exit right there for one, two, three R. That's why you want to specialize instead of what I think you're doing is you're not even looking at this. You're just doing this and, and jumping around and not, not watching the context of the entire move. And the same thing here. Here's one after a huge long move and the PSAR flips and it starts to move out and your stop is here. Apparently this, what, came down and took you out for one R and then came right back up and did this. Where's my re-entry? Same entry. Yet, what, you think it's going to work the first time? Otherwise, it'll never work again? That's the start of the day at the end of a, of a horrible, long, terrible, not good move. And the entire market 
was taken off and going like a scalded ape today. We should be on that. Same thing here. This is solid support and a tight wrist box. Tried it long, cut it. Tried it short, cut it. And here's my PSAR flip. I should be on that. New day. It did not fail further. And the whole market is going up. Uh, and that's in Tesla. That was that should be a no-brainer move on a day like today when the entire S&P and the entire tech sector is going up. Oh, and you're trading it on one minutes. This is noise. This move went all the way up into here. You're trading way too fast. Too distracted. Weekend report review. Oops. Back into bullish volatile. That's the best, second best condition for intraday trading and one day profit cap. The other one being this. Tech is leading the way and U.S. and energy's in play. Volatility is starting to turn. That's going to be good for the long side. ETF2 says this is no place to be making long-term bets, but you should be emphasizing short-term trading. This week, it held. It did not go down to 410 to this level of support. It turned and crossed the dragon. With price, the RL10 turned and crossed the PSAR, uh, crossed the uh, RL30, excuse me. That is a P1. The, here's the last time the RL10 crossed the RL30. It, it broke. It broke through the RL270. The 90 crossed the 270 here. The RL10 entered the, and then passed through this little noise buffer on the RL270. It broke through the RL10 belly runaway move to the downside and this week it did not fail further it did not come back to 410 it made the turn and it crossed today the rl30 that is such a low risk consolidated uh, uh, compound critical state This is so this is so powerful. There is so much energy built into that thing. It could be like all of this energy which blew up and went that way. That's how big this move out of a compound critical state can be and how small your risk box is. And even if it breaks this way and then reverses that way or then reverses again, you got to follow the price out of this compression. That thing is radioactive, ready to go. I can't put it any simpler than that. Next week is a trader's delight. On the threes, that found support and is starting to work. This bottomed out and is starting to work. If the nine day reverses up, look, you got another affirmation of a kata two. This one is an SSC, so danger. But the longer term guys said, hey, 
that was manageable and they got their eyes set on this that's the real prize if it gets above here off we go so you got to watch long term 470 is when the big boys add their second position or third position they pounded the heck out of this thing they endured this put one on here hold and go so this is an interesting intermediate stopping point on this tactical leg up and if it breaks above 470 up we go that's what you need to know about the long-term strategic level it has held above this of this whole thing it held above there and it's trying to make that turn and if it breaks above here off we go this is an intermediate level if it gets through 450 that's another vote to the upside that'll be two votes to the upside hundred and fifty day look back there's the turning point today was a large move up could that be a head fake sure we'll see we'll find out Monday just so you know we ident this was the danger zone down in here and this did not fail into that danger zone it has held and today was an accelerated move up and it got to this critical state and held now we're gonna find what's it gonna do on Monday looking for a large gap on Monday we'll see everything in ETF 2 the very conservative world market model everything's below its four month moving average so caution patience chill but look at what's working this week tech energy gave up the ghost which is Devon energy to the downside if it collapses healthcare wasn't bad but where was the juice tech tech the only thing so what you're looking for on Monday what's the S&P doing what is tech doing and then if that's working do you want semis you want Tesla and you want my, my the no-brainer is one of all is the one I have four positions on Microsoft I've already made my bet that's my bet on Microsoft on the hybrid right there and I have a certain amount of cushion on it just from that trade one unit of risk this first position one two three four five six four two and one that has 13 R in hand and I'm letting that ride markets money it for me to break even on that trade it would have to gap down from 327 to th to below 320 it would have to gap that far to turn that into a zero trade so be it that is hybrid trading in the Dow 30 what worked this week United Healthcare Microsoft Apple in Techland were there ever two safer tech companies right now than Microsoft and Apple that's that shows you 
where the big money was making its long-term safe bets. Intel wasn't bad, and you can buy a ton of it at that price, and it's actually had a pretty good month in six months. So that's not a bad stealthy tech. What got murdered? Coke, McDonald's, Verizon's. Wow. Deep value in McDonald's. I am not losing sight of the fact that that is one of the great American companies that everybody has to own. Um, who are the tradables? Based on average daily dollar volume in the last 30 days in the ATR percentage. Energy. Utilities and semiconductors are going to be big. China. Brazil. <clears throat> Oil exploration, biotech, regional banks, gold miners. Gold is, I, George, I see you trading gold. Gold is very hard to trade. It's so quiet. You, you can't even trade that intraday. There's no volatility. Stay out of that. If you're going to trade gold complex, this is four times as volatile, three times, three times as volatile as gold, and it moves in tandem with the, the gold instrument. Trade the volatility if you're trading short term. daily weakness in McDonald's weakness in Walmart that's got to be getting to be a value play super strength in Microsoft which had a 143 on the 10-day NDX you don't need to know more than that Apple being pretty good at 104 143 that's what I mean by finding the movers we got to find those things. Uh, the rest of it I leave for your review. Take good care and uh, we'll see the creativity and the foundation's new students this weekend. And uh, still time to join those cohorts. The price is going up on 1 November. It'll never be this cheap again. You get lifetime access to the course and all future course uh, course updates. If you were ever going to buy that course, October is the month to buy it. So last time I'm going to say it.